We're back with the 1986 Honda CR125. As you guys know, I picked this thing up for $500. We got it running, driving, but it wasn't running and driving the greatest. It was okay. So we ended up tearing it down and uh, we found that coolant was seeping into the oil and uh, part of the water pump area was corroded. So we're gonna fix that today. We got a brand new piston for it. We're gonna be honing out the cylinder. Um, the shock in the back was junk. We got a brand new back shock for it. We got fork boots for it. Um, we've got a brand new sprocket to go on it. You can see this one's just shot. We have a brand new seat cover, the blue seat cover. And uh, by the end of the video, this thing should be looking really, really nice. And hopefully driving perfectly. So let's get going with it. We've got a lot to do. Got to rebuild the whole thing today and uh, get everything back together. All right, here's the cylinder for the CR125. You can see it looks pretty good. This one is bored over. I think it's 1.5 millimeters. Um, let's get off the reeds. Those look pretty pretty decent. We just don't want any of that uh, honing material to get in there. There we go. Two stroke oil for the honing process here. Get that in there. Cylinder already looks really good, so. That's all I should need. Lightly hone that. Don't want to take off too much material. Yeah, that's perfect. Just want to scratch up that surface a little bit. You can see the cross hatches now in there. So now those rings should be able to seat perfectly in there. Yeah, look at that. So let's wash this out really well. All that honing material gets in the ports and uh, that could easily wreck the pistons. Those are really rusty. All right, dunk in the cylinder. Thank you. 
All right, cylinder spotless, looking perfect. Here is the Weisco piston for this thing. Um, let's see what size it is. Here's the ring, but I believe this one's a 66. Let's open it up and have a look. It looks like we're gonna have to drill a couple holes for the the bridge and the exhaust port. So this one's a 5550. It's not quite a 56. So it's about uh, 1.5 millimeters over bore. Let's see, we've got the circlips here. Just see how the piston fits in here. Go all the way down. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That is gonna be good. So this one actually has two rings. Check these out. So these do have markings on the top here. This is M50, so the markings go up on the piston. Yep, this one's the same. So I believe the rings are the exact same, so it doesn't matter which one you put where. None of them have a bevel. So, let's just see what the ring gap's at. That is a nice tight clearance right there. That is very tight. Between 11 and 10 thousands. So that is a very tight clearance. Um, let's check the other ring. I think they're gonna be fine. This one's a little bit more it looks like. Tad. No, well, maybe not. You can see that's a nice tight clearance there. Yep, same, same exact. So, right between ten and eleven thousandths of an inch. So, definitely uh, not too big. <laughs> so. That all looks good. Let's start drilling this piston out. We need two holes right here for extra lubrication for the exhaust uh, bridge right here. In order to measure the correct placement of the holes we have to drill, we have to do a dry fit with the piston and the cylinder. So the cylinder's going on. All right, if you guys look up in here, you can see the marker lines outlining the bridge. So we are gonna drill the holes right in the middle of that and it should line up directly with that bridge. All right, you can see now we have our marking where the exhaust bridge is touching the piston. So according to the instructions here, it says, uh, Drill two holes, 0.06 to 0.09 inches in diameter, 0.375 inches apart, start, starting at 0.3 below the bottom ring and between the pencil lines. So these are technically the pencil lines. So we're at 0.3. Let me go right below the bottom ring. And then we're gonna go 0.375 inches apart. So 0.375. Right there. So 
So we're gonna go down to That's pretty much perfect. Now we're gonna really clean off this piston. All right, time to get this piston on. First, we'll get the base gasket on. So we're just gonna put a little bit of the gasket maker on. Just a very small amount. Let's see here. I fit over just like that. There we go. Alright, so arrow with the holes going towards the exhaust. Alright, so what's going on next? can actually see the little hole right there. We need to compress that spring this way so that the little clip in here, little clip in here pops in. All right, just turn over this piston here. It's nice and smooth, looking perfect. All right, let's get the head on next. Torque specs are 20 foot pounds for both the cylinder and the head nuts here. So let's get these torqued down. Reed's going back on here. A little gasket maker to help out the new gasket. Alright, gasket going on.
All right, so coolant was leaking into the engine and we think it was coming from the corroded water pump in here. See that? It's all corroded in here. And it looks like there's just a little piece that was coming through right there. Kind of hard to see it. It's very small. But what we're going to do is take a little JB Weld and fix the inside of here and then patch that tiny little hole in there. And that should fix our problem. Um, I'm going to scrape off this gasket, this old gasket here for the water pump. So we got the new seal kit for this. Just wanted to clean out the inside of where the seals go. And that's looking pretty good. So now we're gonna take a little Dremel and just kinda sand off that paint where we're gonna apply the JB Weld right here. Just gonna lightly use this and take that paint off of there. stuff out. Alright, before we apply the JB Weld, we've got a brand new uh, water pump seal kit. So let's start installing that. We've got the first oil seal here. Gonna put a little grease on that. So this it's going to be pressing with the spring side up. I'm just gonna press that in here. Like that. See, spring side is facing up, and then on this side, you can see that's what that looks like. So now we can get the bearing in. Here's the bearing. I'll put a little grease on that too, just to help slide in. You can put a little bit of grease in there too. Get that bearing going. Perfect. And there's going to be a seal on this side. And it's going to be a spring facing down again. A little bit of grease.
All right, there we go. And you put it in that way because you always put the spring towards the fluid. And on this side, coolant's going in through this way, which is pushing against that spring and that seal that way. And then oil is pushing against the seal on this side, that's why you put the spring up that way. So whichever way fluid is going in, you put the spring up. Using some of this steel stick from JB Weld. Mix up a little bit of that. This stuff is nice because you can direct it where to go. It's not super, you know, thin. So, and this stuff is pretty strong. Holds up to 4,000 PSI. And it's resistant to gas and oil. All right, that's pretty good. Now we're just gonna put a small amount Shoved right down in here. All right, time to get the rear shock off. So there's a bolt down here, bolt right here, and a couple clamps holding this on. The old and with the new. Change out this rear sprocket here.
go. This one. Not here. That goes in. All right, tab is bent over. This goes on. There's a little ball bearing in there. That. This goes on like this. Springs on. Get the gas all greased up here so that if we have to take it off again, it will be easy enough to take off. Also, it helps it stick and get the cover on easier. So, we've got our little gear in there for the water pump, water pump impellers on. So, now let's try to install this. Some good compression right there. Oh, ho, ho. This. The other one goes on here. Like that. Mm, that goes on like that. This is gonna go like that, so this one. That greased up all the covers. All right, whole engine is back together. All right, let's get these grips changed out here. Cut these off. Bunch of tape on here underneath. Got some new grips here. You put on. First, we gotta get this tape off of here. Pile up the tape.
Right, that grips on. All right, time to install the fork boots here. They go like that, so the skinny part up, and then the bottom part here goes right here with a clamp. See, so it comes with the clamps and the zip ties for it. All right, we got the front wheel off, caliper off. Now we can get each fork off here. All right, bike is coming along. Let's get the seat done next. We got a brand new seat cover for it. Right now the one on it was black and it was really ripped up and everything. So we got a brand new seat cover and uh, that should look pretty good. So here is the seat cover. It actually says Honda on it. Honda CR. So that'll go right there. That'll be pretty sweet. All right, let's get all the staples out of here.
All right, let's skip the seat cover on. All right, it's getting there. We're gonna use a little heat and uh, stretch it out pretty good. That looks a lot better. Looking pretty sweet. I'm liking it. All right, time to get the graphics on the shrouds here. So the Honda is gonna go straight in line with the first um, peg here. And then the wing is gonna be pretty much parallel to that. Just like that. Spray a little bit of this. Close enough, right? I don't think I should have used water.
All right, that's looking pretty sweet. <laughs> I like it. Looking like a CR again. All right, time to add some oil to this thing. Hopefully it doesn't leak. <laughs> We've got brand new gaskets, so uh, it shouldn't leak. This thing takes 700 milliliters. Exactly. Make sure all the lines are tight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everything looks good. Let's add some coolant. Coolant's topped off in there. All right, we've got the brand new piston, brand new oil, coolant, all new gaskets. Um, let's see if this thing fires up. Uh-oh, not firing. I adjusted the idle and it started like first kick. So this thing's running awesome. We will see how it rides. We'll probably have to fine tune the carb, but uh, yeah, she starts right up every kick. So I'm really happy with that. No leaking whatsoever, not a single drop out of this engine. So she's really tight. Everything is perfect. So I think it's time to take it for the test drive. 
All right, made it up to the land. It is a great day for a ride. We're gonna test this thing out and uh, see how it runs. All right, just get a little walk around of it after it's complete. Pretty clean looking now. Suspension feels so much better. I let this thing warm up quite a bit. This thing is running great. Um, you can hear it kind of breaking up low end, so we turned out the air screw. 
another turn and we're pretty much perfect now so yeah this thing is awesome lots of compression yet we'll do a compression test when we get back home just to see what that compression is at but that is a ton of compression and then we'll see if that oil is milky as well once we get home see if we fixed the water pump issue which I think we did but yeah I'm really happy with the way it turned out it is looking great And uh, we're gonna check compression too. See what we're at. We're hoping for over 150. Plug looks pretty good. All right, moment of truth. Will it be over? 150. It'll open. We're hoping for at least 160, 170. We're at 160. So, that's pretty good. Freshly rebuilt, 160 pounds of compression, right where we need to be. All right, now we're gonna check the oil. <clears throat> See if that's milky. A bunch of sand in here. I'm riding. Oh man, that's hard to open. Yeah. Who thinks it's gonna be milky? And it might be a little gray from the clutch, but it should not be milky. Oh yeah, it's not milky. Just a little gray, but definitely not milky. It would be white. Look at that, nice and clear. Just a little gray. <laughs> so that is fixed. It was straight up milkiness before, so. Perfect. So we fixed that issue as well. Well then, what do you think? You like the bike? Check out the bike, look. What do you think of the new updated bike, buddy? What do you think? You like it? Seems like you like it. All right. Well, I think that wraps up today's video and uh, the 1986 CR125. Hope you guys enjoyed the little series on this thing, picking it up for 500 bucks. I think we've got another maybe 400 bucks into it, so maybe $900 into this project. It was definitely fun tearing this thing down, rebuilding it, and getting it to look more like a Honda. <laughs> so I think that's where we're gonna end this one. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one, and until next time, we are out.